Hello friends, we're going to be running two radios on two different antennas from the same location with no bandpass filters. It's field day 2023, baby. Let's go. This is the special activation. That's a great wolf. That's awful close. Parks on the air. Good morning, Poto friends. It is field day 2023. We are set up in high country in Colorado. Got the RV set up uh, with the batteries and the solar, and I've got uh, all the equipment over there in the in the uh, in the ham hut with the extension cord running over to the RV. So we'll be running off uh, those batteries mostly uh, out here in the field. You can see. I've got the DX Commander uh, masked up with uh, the infed half wave running to him. And then over here behind me, I don't know if you can see it, he kind of he kind of hides. Uh, there we go, I think I got it in the shot, is the uh, Wolf River Coils. I'm just going with the standard six foot whip on this and not putting the 17 foot chameleon on there because uh, the wind has been blowing quite a bit up here. And in these mountains, even when they're not predicting wind, uh, you can get some pretty strong gusts, so uh, I'm just gonna go with the low stress option of the uh, the six foot whip, not take too much wind load there, and then I just don't have to worry about it at all. I do want to make an adjustment on the uh, on the mast here. The infed half wave ends about right here, and then it's just rope going up to the mast. I think I can get it up higher and work it better if I pull the mast in and actually get it to where the the, the active element is is going uh, through the mast. So I'm gonna reset it so it'll be kind of in an inverted V configuration. And the other end of it, I just have, uh, there's little uh, loops, plastic loops on every corner of the, of the ham hut that uh, I think is for attaching a fly or something like that, or maybe something to the sides of it, I'm not sure. But I just uh, used a carabiner and I've got the uh, transformer clipped right there onto the tent itself. All right, so that's an improvement. I got the yeah. mast a lot closer to the tent now. So I got the element going up to that and the elements going, oh, I've probably got over 20 feet of it past okay. the mast. So I think that'll work better. I'm on the roof of the eight ton radio go box. And while I'm slightly embarrassed to admit how much this rig uh, lacks in terms of a permanent base station setup, primarily because I'm mostly a portable operator, what it doesn't lack is support systems for a radio setup. Starting with these guys here behind me. I got four 200 watt solar panels uh, that I've got uh, set up here to absorb sun from the, what are gonna be clear skies all day long and uh, should be able to provide plenty for what I need and for what the family's using in the RV. Let's check out the inside. All right, it's still a little rough here, but this is the setup for the day. Uh, I'll be running FT8, FT4, whatever digital modes are the flavor of the moment. I'll be running on my uh, laptop. My laptop that's been running on the last leg for about the last three years. Uh, and I've got this the screen connected to it as well. So I'll have my, I'll have my logger on this screen over here because this is kind of a low quality screen. It's easy to read because it's brighter. That's yeah, like an $80 monitor, so the quality's not there. But uh, for, for a logger, it's okay. For something that's got more fine print, more detail on it, like uh, WSJTX, I'm going to want to have that on a higher quality laptop screen. So that'll be over there. But during the daytime, some that's going to be hard to see just because it's dimmer. A little give and take. So that's that half of the operation. The reason I have two antennas is because simultaneously, at times, I'm going to run the FT891 on Morse code, maybe some voice, but mostly Morse code. I'm going for the multipliers. 
So I get times two multiplier for Morse code. I get times two multiplier for FT8. And by running it all low power, five watts, I get another five time multiplier. So each contact will be worth 10 points. But I had to uh, set up the two antennas in uh, reverse polarity and get them reasonably far apart so that they don't interfere with each other. So the, you know, from my view, the Wolf River coils is out in that direction, right through the door there. And then the infit half wave is actually attached to this corner of the tent going in that direction to the north. So uh, each one's about, <clears throat> well, that one's about 100 feet. They're about 100 feet apart since uh, the antenna here just starts right there in that corner. And that one's on my 100 foot coax. So 100 feet apart, reverse polarity, uh, five watts, max power out of both. I tested this last night and I was able to run FT8 and wasn't picking up any extra noise on the FT891. I did at first, but I had this running uh, way too powerful. I had it like at 20 watts. And then the width uh, was really wide. For some reason, uh, it, it defaults to uh, SSB width on CW mode on the FT891. So when I did that, I got about uh, like an S6, S7 noise uh, when I ran the tune function on the uh, on FT8. But once I got the power down where it should be on the Kenwood and got the width where it should be on the Yesu, everything was good. So that's how we're going to operate today. So this is going to be just going constantly. That's the plan. Have this guy going constantly churning out FD8 signals and I've got it connected to uh, uh, N3FJP, my logger. I, I use that all the time, not just field day. And so it'll it'll pop in there automatically and then my CW contacts I'm just going to write down and as I get breaks I'll feed those into the log as I go. Alright, so the other half of my strategy involves running 5 watts. So what I'm going to try to do is just to avoid the big fray I don't want to be on 20 meters in the late afternoon when it's just wall-to-wall -wall solid powerful signals huge pileups and I'm trying to sneak in with my 5 watt signal uh, that's not how I want to spend my time so uh, I'm gonna to try to be on uh, what I would call shoulder bands so if 20 is the hot band I'm gonna be either on 15 or, or 40 I also don't want to be propagating into the densely populated parts of the eastern half of the United States. So uh, I did some work on BOA cap uh, researching for today to see what bands would get how far, you know, given uh, the high SFI that we're expecting today around 190, 180, somewhere in that range. And I want to stay west of the Mississippi. So Missouri, St. Louis, Texas, Dallas, Houston. Okay, I can handle those. I don't want to be getting over into the Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, you know, that, that area in there in Georgia that we get so many contacts. It's just so dense. You know, I'm going to have a hard time breaking through that pile. So for that reason, I'm going to focus heavily on 20 and 40 because 20, uh, even during the day with, uh, with the D layer, isn't going to get much farther than uh, the Mississippi so all spring. That's been my experience operating out west here is 20 meters will get me get me just about to the Mississippi or a little bit shorter anything farther than that and it's been getting absorbed and I'm not hearing people out that far. I'm not hearing activators that are out there any farther than that on, on 20 meters. 15 however is kind of interesting because it will just nip the my skip zone goes out so far that the signal just starts coming down on the extreme east coast. So I'm wondering if that might be useful. If 20 or 40 aren't panning out, maybe I could skip over to 15 and I'm thinning out the herd, so to speak, just because I'm only hitting so much landmass all right along the coast. It's still populated area, but it's not very much. And they're not going to be hearing much there either. I don't I think they're going to be listening to, you know, DX stations overseas and what few stations we have out west here. I'm still not competing with all those uh, all those loud stations uh, between the coast and the Mississippi. So I'm, I'm thinking that might work out as well. So 15, 20, and 40, I think are gonna be my big bands. Mostly 20 and 40, if those keep working, I'm just gonna stay there. Field Day doesn't offer any multipliers for additional bands. They don't offer any multipliers for hitting other countries or states. So I'm gonna just try to, to you know, my goal is to run on five watts. 
and that's driving the strategy. So uh, I'm going to stick as much as I can to the western part of the country here, bang out contacts that way, and uh, we'll see how that goes and we'll adapt as, as we need. Just kind of getting the finalizing the screen set up here. I am uh, transmitting on 15, uh, 15 meters right now on FT8, seeing if I can uh, get anybody. Not a whole lot of signals out there, so it seems like one of those shoulder bands. Uh, 40 is just all static. 20 is just going to be insane. All right, I think I'm all set to go. 40 minutes, the party begins. I'm going to go in, make a sandwich, do some of the necessary things that have me ready to have my butt in chair for the start of field day. I think I'm going to feel things out a little bit at first, right when it gets started. I'm on 20 right now. I'm sure there's going to be, you know, tons of signals coming down here once, uh, once noon hits. We'll watch that. We'll see how that works. I'm thinking I can tune up or down in the band a little bit and maybe find some uh, space to transmit in there. We'll, we'll see. I'm still going to be a weak signal. But uh, 40s all static, and I uh, just didn't hear much on 15. But maybe when a ton of people are transmitting, 15 will work better. They are calling for some uh, possible flares today. You know, when I played golf, I didn't get bothered very much by bad conditions. I just keep playing. Everyone else get frustrated. So uh, if there's a flare or something like that hits, I'm just going to keep rolling. A lot of the people just quit. That'll probably help me out in the long run. Okay, so first thing I learned here on field day 2023 is an AB comparison on the two antennas, the Wolf River coils with the short whip and the infed half wave. And you can see all the signals I'm hearing on uh, 40 meters right now, midday. I was getting nothing on the compromised Wolf River coils. So that's making a big difference right now. We'll see if that results in any contacts. I'm calling CQ for the fourth time here. Off to a slow start. Uh, 21 minutes into it with no contacts, but that's okay because uh, my time officially doesn't start until I make that contact. So, not going to sweat a slow start too much. All right, I got my first customer here. We got W6TJ, they're a 3 Alpha, Orange County. Just sent them my info, and they got it. Booyah, first contact. All right, time for an update. Almost two hours into field day 2023 here. I've got uh, 14 contacts on FT8. I've done two voice and one Morse code on the FT891. I tried running the um, Wolf River coils on this, and with that short, short whip, it was just so deaf. Uh, I put on the 17 foot whip, and it was better, just like that. So, the old saying the more metal in the air, the better. And uh, that certainly played out here. And at the lower, at uh, the higher bands, the shorter antenna, that whip's not blowing around the wind too bad. So at 15 meters, I'm okay. 20 meters is still too busy. So there's no point in extending that thing all the way up. Uh, it's just tough. A lot of people uh, can't hear me voice. And I just made my first CW, so we'll see if I can do a little better on that. Voice didn't go real well. The 17 total contacts, 160 points. Eh. All right, another update here. We're three and a half hours in. FT8's going pretty good now. I have ended up on 20 meters, and that's going pretty good. I think because it's not reaching out too far east. Though I've gotten some out there, so I'm not real sure why that's uh, working so well. I didn't anticipate that. But uh, I've got 32 digital contacts. That's all FT8. That's going pretty good. The voice and CW has not gone well. I've got, only gotten four contacts there. I thought that was going to go better. I would like to be more in the 10 to 15 range at this point. So I'm going to keep another one there on FT8 to Illinois. Um, I don't know. i got to keep trying different stuff. See if I can figure out something that will work so I can make contacts on this. But the uh, weather is just gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous today. Beautiful day. Winds are a lot lighter. Temperature is perfect. Couldn't ask for a better day. As long as solar conditions hold together, we'll be all right. It is 523 local, or five and a half hours into field day. I'm up to 46 digital contacts and six contacts combined with uh, voice and Morse code. I got 
back on 40. 40 is starting to come alive, so I've got the FT8 machine on 40. And I'm just, like once an hour, I'll get a voice or, or Morse code. That part's been really frustrating. People just flat cannot hear me. I mean, I'll get activators when they're uh, calling CQ and no one's answering and they keep calling CQ, but I'm calling in there and they cannot hear me. So, but then I got an Ohio just a second ago, super easy. So maybe it'll change. I did have some sort of solar storm just hit. All the uh, conditions went downhill. The geomagnetic atmosphere is active. Uh, so we'll see what that does. I'm still doing okay on 40, so maybe it's not too bad. I'm about to eclipse 500 points in the first five hours. Okay. Uh, all right. You know, I'm doing okay. Ooh, getting another one. Okay. Right. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. And that's the way it's gone. <laughs> All afternoon. And the Morse code guys are going 500 miles an hour, and they can't hear me either. I sit there and listen and listen and listen over and over again until I get their information right. And then I respond, and they can't hear me. Okay, so I'd kind of move it into, uh, move the tent into night mode. Temperature here drops really fast. You know, it'll be 80 during the day, and it gets down to the 30s at night. And it changes like that. In the morning, it switch, switches and changes again. So uh, I'll get this closed up before it gets dark and uh, keep a little bit of warmth in here. Staying warm is going to become an issue. I have to go change clothes and at dinner time. Uh, still trying to get some contacts uh, with voice and Morse code, and it's still tough. I got 11 contacts, voice and Morse code, uh, and 87 digital. So it's... Uh, you know, I didn't think the ratio would be quite that steep, but it's pretty steep. I'm running the F FT4 now, and that has picked up my rate quite a bit. That's been nice. I'm running FT4 20 meters on here, and I'm uh, trying to make voice contacts on 40 meters. This is still an infed half wave voice. I'm running on uh, the Wolf River coils now with the 17-foot whip, so I can hear better. Um, 930 points so far. I'm, uh, I'm feeling better. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. He is not weight. He's not a tail ender. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. And then he got a tail under. <laughs> Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Oh, man, another India, Mike. Stabbed me in the heart. Oh, hello. I just got deluged here. You can tell something happens with propagation because I won't get any returns and then I get three or four all at once. Like I got one good signal out. Everyone replies. Got propagation for a little minute there. Oh, this guy wanted to finish it. Okay. I'll get one here. K0QB. Got him. Oh, and now I got W0 BLG. Cool. Kind of worked two simultaneously. All right, and it is Sunday morning, field day weekend, just before 9 a.m. local. I worked till about 1 o'clock last night and uh, got it right up to 1,700 points for a total. I think I'm at 1,695 to be completely precise, but uh, 
I got, I can go, I, I personally can go to about, I think I made my contact, my first contact 39 minutes after the hour. I'll have to double check, but uh, some around 1230 is when I hit my 24 hour mark and by rule I have to stop. We'll see if uh, I can hit 2000 points in contacts uh, by then. I've already got 2000 points with the bonus points I'm going to get, but uh, we'll see if we can just do it with contacts alone. Uh, basically yesterday running QRP voice in CW is like slamming my head against the wall all day long it was so hard there were so many times that someone's sitting there calling CQ and hearing nobody and I'm screaming out my call in between uh, them calling me and I'm hearing them s9 and they just keep calling you know they don't hear me at all and then a ton of times where it's you know the first words when they reply to me are oh boy or wow or okay we'll try or something like that because uh, they can just barely hear me uh, so there were then there were a few that we just couldn't get it done so that was tough uh, as much as I'm you know I don't really enjoy FT8 all that much it's really saved my bacon uh, as far as getting some points on field day so uh, it's a it's a backup mode for me and uh, you can hear WSJTX warming up in the background we're gonna we're gonna hit it some more this morning see how much more I can take but after this weekend I'll be done with FT8 for a little while here's some of the distant views we have to our south at the campsite right over here I believe that's called Gore Valley pretty little uh, pretty little gorge looking thing in there I might see if there's a road that goes through there but uh, you know, it's a pretty area A truck sitting here. I almost feel like I could, I could uh, shoot a GM commercial or something like that with some of the scenery behind it. Something like that. <laughs> if I was a photographer, and I had a clean truck. There's a look at the map after uh, yesterday's activation. Not too bad. I didn't think I'd be getting out to those uh, eastern states, but there was more room on 20 meters than I thought there would be on FT8. So. That really facilitated, uh, you know, all these contacts over here what, uh, east of the Mississippi. Otherwise, I'd only be getting up about so far. So all that is, you know, 20 meters actually actually working. And, uh, well, of course it's working, but uh, they, there was room for me. And even this morning I'm seeing, you know, there's some, there's some open slots there to squeeze in. So it wasn't just packed solid full of signals. And I just hopped around a ton, you know, if I get to where I'm, I've called three or four or five times and haven't gotten a response, <clears throat> I flip to the other side of the call and go to a space that I know it's open. So I'm always hopping around. So even if someone jumps on me, it's only going to slow me down for a couple minutes. Well, uh, <laughs> FT4, I'm actually running FT4. I say FT8, I include all, but FT4 has actually been kind of a bust here early on. I'm not getting any response. Kilo, Echo Zero, Victor, India Mike. Let's do a beer Tuning on 40 meters changed overnight on the, on the coil. Yeah, it looks too long. Stimulus, let's start it at 1 megahertz. Now we're about 6.7. I don't need to make a huge adjustment. I'm going to shorten that a clip. There we go. Now the dip. Well. Curve's just kind of steep. In the middle of the voice portion of 40 meters. I'm at 2.0. I still need to shorten it a little bit. One more click. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike, QRP. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike, QRP. 
This is how it's gone. All right, we're going to listen uh, to the interaction between these two things. Uh, this is running 20 meter FT8. We've got a 40 meter voice here. Two antennas, about 100 feet apart. Opposite polarity. Let's listen to what happens when uh, uh, FT8 kicks in. It's about to transmit uh, here in about seven seconds. Here we go. Okay, there you can see it drops down to about an S1 static level and before, in between this uh, splatter that I'm getting from 3K below me, it was at an S2 when I was transmitting. Here, I'm about to transmit again. There you can see, just, just enough to uh, register there. Not going to cause any problems, uh, so that's what it's like to not have a band filter, a band pass filter. Finally, a little bit of success on voice. Here in the last five minutes, I've gotten three voice contacts. I've got this running on 20 meters now, and FT8's on 15 meters. So that's kind of balanced the two out okay. Uh, and that's working reasonable for me right now, but I'm thrilled about getting three voice contacts. It's awesome. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. QRP. He didn't hear me. Uh, turn the camera on. W5GNB, Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Okay, so once again, as soon as I turned the camera off, uh, I got some good voice contacts, including this guy out of Oregon. So I've now gotten six voice contacts this morning. A little less than two hours left. Just crossed 200 contacts. Uh, yeah, right at 200 contacts right now at 10.35 in the morning with two hours to go. 1,895 points. Just got another one. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Roger, Roger, uh, uh, 2 Bravo, Colorado. 2 Bravo, Colorado, thank you. Please copy 1 Delta, Santa Barbara. <laughs> Got 1 Delta, Sierra Bravo. Thank you. Good luck, 7 3. Wow, that was actually normal. And I got it on camera. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, Italy, Mike. Please copy 4 Alpha Orange. Roger, Roger. 2 Bravo, Colorado. 2 Bravo, Charlie Oscar. QSL, thank you, and 73. This is Whiskey Alpha. Okay, so the goal now is to beat last year's contact total. Last year I was in northern New York. Uh, right there, an easy reach of the whole eastern seaboard, running QRO and uh, able to run frequencies. And I got 228 contacts. Right now I'm at 216. So with uh, just about an hour to go, that's my goal is to beat that 228 from last year. Also got the coolest contact of field day by far, a voice contact to Maine on 20 meters during field day with five watts. That was crazy. I can't believe he heard me. I was only hearing him about an S2 or S3. He was clear, but it was an S2 or S3, and he heard me. It did take a little bit 
of back and forth, but nowhere near as hard as a lot of other contacts. So that was that was very cool. QRZ, November 6th Radio, Oscar Radio. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India, Mike. Two on the frequency, now they can hear me. All right, it's wrap up time. Grand total 199 digital contacts and 30 other contacts, including one Morse code, 29 voice. I think I doubled or tripled my voice contacts just in the few hours I worked this morning. It was going a lot better. Um, so my total got up to 229. That is one more contact than last year. I got one more, uh, but point total is going to be way more. I think I got 700 some odd points last year, and most of those were bonus points. Uh, with bonus points this year, I'll be get 350. I think I'll be 2440, 2495, so just under 2500 when all is said and done. So that was pretty good. FT4 is nice for uh, for field day. That really keeps going. There's just less traffic on it, which seems crazy to me. Why people sit on FT8 and don't do FT4 for something like this? You think it'd be the reverse, and FT4 would be jam packed, and FT8 would have space, but. Generally, there's more people on FT8. Uh, nothing too terribly exciting in terms of contacts. Just the one to main, the voice contact, five watts to main, just out of the blue. Uh, and he caught half my call sign the first time and caught the second half of the call sign the second time. Uh, he had to confirm the exchange, but he got it the first time. Of course, I could hear him fine, uh, but he was only reading about S2, S3 on the meter. That was pretty cool. So the two antennas was the big thing, having this one out here horizontal and this one out here vertical. And uh, there was some interference sometimes. There was some noticeable interference on, uh, you know, on, on you know, always having them on different bands, but uh, it was it was noticeable, but not it didn't impede anything. Uh, if you were really close, had someone way down the noise you're trying to pick out, it would have interrupt. So, five watts, antennas 100 feet apart, and reverse polarity, and it did okay. There was a couple times where I think one frequency, it might have jumped up a whole S unit with noise when uh, FT8 was transmitting, but I think that's just because I was right on a, um, right on a harmonic, right on a multiple. And if I tuned away from it, then that, then that effect would go down. So it would cause a spike maybe in one spot. But uh, I wouldn't hesitate doing that again. Uh, power was no problem. We were, uh, the batteries were about 80% charged when I started at noon yesterday, which is typical of, of any day. Uh, and then we did charge up to full capacity while I was operating during the day yesterday. And I noticed this morning at about 9 o'clock after they've been charging a little bit, I think they were at 54%. And now we're back up into the 70s again. So we were able to, with uh, 800 watts on the roof, uh, generally producing, you know, they max out about 650, 670, somewhere around in there. It worked out fine. Power production was not a problem. And that's a wrap for Field Day 2023. If you've made it this far in the video, hit like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next adventure. Kilo Echo Zero, Victor India Mike, signing off.